Hey guys, welcome back to another video. And today we're going to be solving the leak code question, serialize and deserialize a binary search tree. All right, so let's just start off with what exactly serialization means. So serialization is converting a data structure or an object into a sequence of bits so that it can be stored in a file or memory buffer, or it could be used for transmitting data or whatever it is. And deserializing is taking that serialized data and converting that exact same data back into whatever data structure or object it was. All right, so what we want to do in this question is we want to design an algorithm to uh, serialize and deserialize a binary search tree. And there is no restriction on how your serialization or deserialization algorithm should work. You need to ensure that a binary search tree can be serialized to a string. And the string can be serialized to the original binary uh, tree structure. Sorry. Okay, so one thing we want to note here is we want to go back to the original tree structure. So before we move any further, I just want to go through what exactly a binary search tree, uh, tree is, and I'll go through that real quickly. All right, so it's a tree-based data structure like this one over here. And what happens in a binary search tree is, let's say we go to a certain node. So let's go to this node over here with the value 4. And everything to the left of that node has to be less than the current node we're on. And that makes sense. So we're at 4, and we have 1, 2, 3, which are all less than 4. And then 7 is to the right. So everything to the right is greater than whatever the node we're on is. So in this case, 7 is greater than 4. Uh, one more example, so let's go to 2 over here. So if you go to the left, we have 1. And if you go to the right, we have 3. And 1 is less than 2, 3 is greater than 2. So that uh, that's exactly what a binary search tree is. Now, the thing is, how exactly can we deserialize it? We want to get back. So once we serialize something and then deserialize it, we just don't want a binary, uh, binary search tree, but instead, we need the exact same binary search tree that we had before. So that kind of changes up or complicates the problem a little bit. So now let's just go through a different ways of traversing through a tree. So we have something called an in-order traversal. So in this, we go to the leftmost node, which is 1, and we get that. So in this case, we get 1. Then we're going to go to 2, then 3, 4, and then 7. So you go to the leftmost, then right, or then the root, and then you go to right. So over here, we go to the leftmost, which is 1. Then we go to its root, which is 2, and then we go to its right value, which is 3. Then we go back to the root, since we finished this values, all of its left nodes, so then we go 4, and then we go 7. Now, the thing that makes a binary search tree special is that when you do an in-order traversal, what is going to happen is that you're going to get the group. You're going to get all of the values in ascending order. And the reason for that is pretty simple. The leftmost node is going to be the smallest value. And the rightmost node is going to be the greatest value. And everything else just falls in ascending order. So that's pretty simple for us. And this over here actually makes it really simple to form a binary search tree. So what I'm going to do over here is I'm going to create a binary search tree, but I'll try to make it balanced. So in order to do that, it's a very simple concept. What we're going to do is we're going to go to our middle node, which in this case is 3, and we're going to make that our root. So in this case, 3 becomes our root. And what that's telling us is everything to the left of 3 is going to be to the left node, since everything to the left has to be less than the value 3. And that includes the numbers 1 and 2. So 1 and 2 are both going to be on the left of it. And 4 and 7 are going to be in the right of it. And that's how our binary search tree is going to look like. But now, the problem with this approach is that even though we do make a valid BST, it is not going to always be the same as whatever the original is. So in order to also get the original, we're going to be using a pre-order in a traversal. So how the pre-order traversal works is we go to the root, then we go to its left, and then we go to its right. So in this case, we're going to start off at 4. So we have 4 first, then we're going to go to 2, and then 1. And so there's nothing on the left of 1. So in that case, we go back to 2 and go to its right node, which is 3. So 4, 2, 1, 3. And over here, we covered everything on the left of the number 4. So now we go to the right of 4 and do the same steps. But there's only one uh, value over here, which is 7, and we're going to add 7. So 4, 2, 1, 3, 7. But how exactly is this actually going to be useful for us? So this is pretty useful for us because it gives us important information of what the root exactly is. And combined with the in-order traversal, that can actually be pretty helpful. And you could also use post-order to, to do the same thing. And that being said, you could use each one of these in their own different ways in order to solve the same question. I'm just going to be giving one of the solutions. So I'll just kind of cross out post order and we'll just focus on these two over here. Okay, so pre-order, its first value is the number four. 
and its first value is always going to be the root node. So let's say now we take the value 4, and we know for a fact that this over here is going to be our root node. So that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to have this as our root node over here. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go to the same number in our in order list. So in this case, where is the number 4? So the number 4 is right over here. And using this information, we can deduce for a fact that everything to the left of the number 4 is going to be on its left child. So on the left child, we're going to have the values 1, 2, and 3. And on the right child, we're going to have everything to the right of 4, which in this case is, well, only 7. And now the question is, how do you further place them accordingly? And in order to do that, pre-order actually makes it a lot easy for us. So now, we're, let's say we go to the left, and the options we have are going to be only 1, 2, and 3. We're going to ignore 7 because that's not going to be on the left-hand side. We're only going to look at 1, 2, and 3. So now what's going to happen is we're going to check this value here, and this has a value of 2. So that is going to be the root that we have over here. So we're going to have 2 as our root. And now we do the exact same steps. So we're going to go to 2 inside of our in-order traversal. So 2 is right over here. And actually, to be more precise, let's go to 2 over here. Because this is the list that we're actually following. Okay, so now everything to the left of 2 is going to be on the left. So in this case, what's to the left? The, uh, the number 1 is on the left. So over here, we could have possibly have 1. And everything to the right of 2 is going to be on the right. So in this case, it's 3. We only have one option for each. And just to make it really simple, I'm just going to write it down. But if you go, do go more methodically, you'd be going through each of these. So you would have 1 over here and 3 over here. Okay, but that's pretty much it. And similarly, now you're going to perform the same steps for the right side of it. And as you can see, there's only one option, so it doesn't really matter. And that would just be the number 7. All right, so hopefully that did make sense. And again, there are several different ways you could solve this question. This is just one that I came up with. Um, and yeah. So let's see how we can do this in code and hopefully that makes a lot more sense. All right, so we'll start off with the serialization part of the code. So over here, in order to serialize it, what we're going to do is we're going to store everything inside of a list and then we're going to take the items inside of a list and we're going to put them inside of our string. So that way we're going to be outputting a string, which is exactly what we're supposed to do. And it tells us clearly encode a tree to a string. Okay, so let's start off by actually defining our list, which is just going to be called results and it's going to be an empty list. So now that we have this, we're going to be performing a pre-order traversal. So let's just make a function for that. So let's just call this pre-order. And the value it's going to be taking, or the parameter, is going to be the root that we're currently on, or the root that we're currently visiting. Okay, so over here, we're going to be doing two things. So the first thing is we want to add the root. So let's just directly do that. So res.append, and we're going to be adding root.val. All right, so we have this over here. And then after that, we're going to go to the left, and then we're going to go to the right. So let's go to the uh, left. So we're going to be calling this function recursively. So pre-order, and when you go to the left, you're going to do root.left. All right, perfect. So let's just copy this. And now we want to go over to the right. So when you want to go to the right, it's the exact same thing, but instead you give it root.right. Now this is going to keep going until we reach all of our nodes, but there's actually a small problem over here. So let's say we go to the node 1. And to the left of 1, we have a value of none. So what exactly do we do over there? So in order to kind of stop this program at one point, what we're going to do is we're going to check if our root has a value. So if root, only then are we going to do these steps. So if the root is equal to none, then in that case, we're not going to go inside of the if statement. And that should be it for our pre-order function. All right, so let's just get out over here. And for the pre-order function, we need to call it over here. So let's just call it pre-order. And in the beginning, we're just going to be giving our root, which we get from over here. All right, so at the ending of this, we get a list of integers. Now, the problem is uh, what we want to return is going to be a string. And what we want to do to make it a lot easier for us, instead of inputting or giving our result over here an integer value, let's give the same thing as a string. So let's just give it a string over here. So now our list holds strings. So the last step is going to be to add that into a single string. And to do that in Python, it's pretty simple. So we can just use the join function. So let's just directly return it. So we're going to be joining it into one string. And between each of the values, we're going to have a space. So that uh, so we're going to have one value, then a space, then another value, and so on and so forth. And let's use the dot join function. And we want to join inside everything inside of res. 
And one more thing is the this step over here is really important because it has to, everything inside of our, our list has to be a string in order to perform the dot join function. So that's it for our serialization part, pretty simple. But now we want to go on to the deserializing part, which might be a little bit more complicated. All right, so now let's move on to the deserializing part of this. So uh, real quickly, what we're going to get for the input of deserializing is the same as what we output in serialize. And in other words, all we're doing is we're taking the string and we're going to convert it back to our tree binary search tree data structure. So to start off, what we're going to do is we're going to take everything inside of our string and we're going to convert that into a list. And that just makes it a lot easier to manipulate. And that way, what's going to happen is that it's going to be easy to go to specific indices or index. OK, so uh, I'll just be using list comprehension to do this. You could also be using the map function to do that. So what I'm going to do is let's do x for x in. And we want to kind of split each of our values. And if you recall, each of the values are spaced out by a single space. So there's a space between each of our values. And we can actually get that pretty simply using data.split. So let's just do that. So x for x in, data.split. And uh, data is coming from right over here. OK, so now, th now that we have this, we get each of our value values. Now, the problem with this is that the x value over here is going to be an, a string. But we actually want to convert it to an integer so we can actually make comparisons and do a ton of other operations on it. So let's just convert that into an integer. And now we're going to have our data as a list of uh, integers of each node's value. So now what we want to do is we want to build up our binary search tree. And to do that, well, let's make a quick function over here and let's just call it build. And over here, we're going to be giving it two parameters. And again, I'm, I'll be going back to the same idea that we did here. And we had two different lists. So we had one list for in order and we had one list for pre order. And one question that you might be having is, how did I get my in order list? Because we didn't actually make a function in order to get an in order list. But it's pretty simple. An in order list for a binary search tree is always going to be a sorted array. And using that property, all we can do is since we already have our pre order data over here, all we're going to do is we're going to take this and sort it. And that's exactly what we're going to be using for our in order list over here. All right, so one more thing that you want to notice over here is that each time we call this function, the pre order and in order list that we're referring to is going to be different. So, for example, in this case over here for the four, which is our root node, we're going to be using this in order list and this pre order list. And let's just say we go to the left of four. And the in order list that we end up using is just going to consist of one, two, and three. So, similarly, we're going to always be giving it different values for in order and post order, or pre order, sorry. And keeping that in mind, that's exactly what we're going to give our helper function. So, build over here is going to take two things. So, I'll just call pre for pre order, and I'll just say in for in order, or in order, never mind. Okay, so we have both of those ready. All right, so inside of this, the first thing that we're going to do is let's actually take out a node from here. So the node that we're going to have is going to be whatever is at the pre-order and at the zeroth index. So I don't think I actually showed this over here, but each time we're shortening out whatever pre-order we're using. And whatever is at the zeroth element is what we're going to use as our root. Uh, so a quick example is when we were at the beginning, we chose the zero element since that's the root, which is four. So that's exactly what we're going to do. And over here, we're going to create this as an object for the tree node class. So let's just call the class the so tree node. And how do we exactly have this class? It's predefined uh, for us over here. So we don't need to worry about that. So this over here, we created our node. So now what we want to do is we want to create our in order function. Or instead, we actually kind of want to know in where is that inside of our in order function. Now, in this case, four is right over here. We could just look at that and find it out. But we want to find its exact index. And that's what we're going to be using a temporary variable for. So I'll just call this variable called temp. And we want to find what index this current value of the node is at. So in order to do that, all we're going to do is we're going to refer to our in order list. And we want to find the current index that we're, uh, the node's value is on. So index node.val, and that is going to tell us at what index we're on. So now that we have this, we're going to actually make the recursive calls. So let's currently say that we created the node of the main root, 
which is the number four. Now, the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna go to everything to the left. So over here, let's just do node.left. And what exactly is this going to be equal to? So over here, we're gonna be calling the build function again, and we wanna give it the pre-order traversal that we're using. Now, the pre-order traversal that we're going to be using is going to be exactly the same so we're gonna use pre-order, we're gonna to go to that list, and we're gonna start off at the first index. So why are we starting off at the first index? And the reason for that is because the zeroth index value is already created as a node. So that is the root node. So we're gonna start off at the first index, and we're going to go up to and including the uh, temporary value that we have. So that is going to be temp plus one because we want to include it as well. So I'm just gonna go back over here, so four, so four over here is at the zero, one, two, third index, right? So four is at the third index. And what that's telling us is our pre-order or the list of values that we're gonna use over here starts at two, since we're gonna start off at the first index, and we're going to go up to the third plus one value. So zero, one, two, three, and we're gonna go up to here. So we're gonna get two, one, and three, and that perfectly makes sense since that's the, those are the values that are on the left of four. All right, so we have that over here, and that's for our pre-order list. And now let's do the same for our in-order list. So that's a lot easier, and all it's going to be is we're gonna start off at zero, and we're going to go all the way up to that temporary value that we have. So that's pretty simple uh, over here. Everything to the left is obviously going to be everything up to four. So one, two, and three is on the left, right? So we went over that. And using this that we created over here, let me just copy this and let's paste it over here. We're gonna do the same thing, but instead we're gonna be doing it for our write node. So over here, let's just do node.write and we're gonna be calling the build function, but our pre-order is not going to be the same. So in this case now, we're gonna start, the first value is gonna start at 10 plus one and we're gonna go all the way up to the ending. So that's gonna be the pre-order list that we're using and the in-order list that we're going to be using is going to be different. So we're gonna start off with one to the right of our temporary value. So we're gonna do 10 plus one. So we start off from there and we're gonna go all the way up to the ending. So that's exactly what we're doing and that should be it. And at the very ending of this recursive call, we're gonna call return node. And finally, after this over here, let's just go outside of this function and we want to return uh, this uh, value over here that we get. So let's do return, and uh, we want to call the build function. So we're going to call the build function, and we're going to. What is the pre-order list going to be in the beginning? So in the beginning, it's exactly what this is over here. So it's going to be our data, and uh, which makes sense because over here we did a pre-order traversal. So that's going to be the pre-order traversal uh, list values for the beginning. And what are the in-order traversal values going to be? So the in-order traversal values, like I said earlier, we're just gonna sort our pre-order traversal. So sorted data. And this is the same as doing an in-order traversal. And that should be it. So let's submit this and let's see what happens. Okay, actually, uh, I forgot to mention one small condition over here. So as you can see over here, it says uh, index error list index out of range. Okay, and that makes sense because we actually did not consider for a fact when our pre-order value is actually empty. So if not pre-order, so then in that case, we're just gonna end up returning none. Okay, and I forgot to do that earlier, okay. And a quick reason about wh what that means. So when our pre-order value does not have anything, that means we've reached a child, or sorry, a leaf. Yeah, so let's submit this and hopefully it works now. All right, so it does, as you can see, our submission is accepted. So finally, thanks a lot for watching guys. Do let me know if you have any questions and don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you.